doing later, Game Boy Micro? The sexiest, most attractively designed handheld of all time is the DS Lite. Particularly the white one. And I don't care who knows it. But in second place, well, it's gotta be this thing, right? From Nintendo, it's the Game Boy Micro. Well, this thing ended up being a novelty, but I've never seen a novelty that looks so sleek and sexy. Look at this thing. It's like the DS Lite's slightly less hot sister, but that, uh, but you know, oh, you'd still take her out on a date. No question. And we might not be back by midnight. So as companies like Nintendo are off to do, uh, this was not a new handheld per se. I mean, it's, it was new, but uh, it wasn't a completely new platform. It's just uh, a new version of the Game Boy Advance. Uh, the Advance SP had already been out for two years, um, which, by the way, is one of the best consoles, best handheld consoles of all time, AGS 101 represent. Uh, however, uh, you know, to freshen up the line, they, uh, they released this bad boy, the Game Boy Micro. It plays all GBA games, uh, drops some other functionality, but really, you know, that's okay because it's, again, it wasn't meant to really, you know, it's not the successor to the GBA, it's just a little update, um, and in particular, it's an update that goes after a very different market, or at least did back in 2005. So if the name didn't give it away, um, I mean, the Game Boy Micro is really, really freaking tiny. Uh, I don't know if I'd call it micro, per se, but it is small. Uh, in fact, for comparison's sake, here it is next to the iPhone 4. As you can see, it's actually roughly the same size, a uh, little bit smaller. And what you have to keep in mind is in 2005, that was crazy. Um, I mean, that was the whole point of the Game Boy Micro, to make it even more portable. Um, but in 2005, th this, the size of this thing was a really big deal. I remember seeing this for the first time and thinking, man, this thing might be too small. And it turns out that for a lot of people, uh, it was. Well, let's talk about that screen, because uh, ironically it's both a weakness and a strength of the Game Boy Micro. Um, a weakness in that it's way too small and, and it just does become impractical for gaming for any long period of time on it. Um, but it's a strength in the fact that it's actually a really good screen. Uh, it may be small, but it's really sharp. Uh, it's 240 by 160 um, and man, it's, it's a much sharper, clearer screen than you got from prior GBA models, even the legendary and beloved AGS 101. Um, so in terms of the, the quality of the screen, uh, the Game Boy Micro really stands out. Um, again, it's just so small that it makes gaming hard, especially, you know, a lot of, game, a lot of GBA games, um, you know, the pixels are very small, and when you're shrinking what are already small pixels, especially in like, a, like platformers and things like that, um, it's actually not only impractical, it, it's, it's sort of uncomfortable and it, it can give you a headache from, from looking at this, this such a small image, especially such a small image that's also very sharp and very crisp looking. Um, the colors are great, the games play great on it, um, but yeah, it's just, it's too small. I mean, I'm, there's really no other way to say it. Um, if you haven't played the, the Game Boy Micro, um, yeah, it's just, it's too small for practical use. Well, we're playing Starsky and Hutch because, frankly, it was the only GBA game I could find lying around. And, uh, boy, Starsky and Hutch, this game sucks. And it's nice to revisit this thing. This is just a beautiful piece of hardware. You've got the two buttons, A and B, on the right. A very nice little D-pad, uh, similar to the DS Lite D-pad. Actually has a similar feel, similar, similar clickiness. You've got a little speaker there. Uh, shoulder buttons on top. Look how shiny the shoulder buttons are. Oh, this is, this is so sweet. And these faceplates are actually removable, so you could customize your Game Boy Micro as well. And there's your start and select buttons. It's got a headphone jack. Uh, there's your on and off switch. How beautiful is that? And the start and select buttons actually light up. Very slick piece of hardware. Uh, one of the drawbacks to the Game Boy Micro is that uh, because of how small it is, and uh, because of the you know the market that it went after, it did drop a lot of functionality. Um, one of the functionalities it dropped was backwards compatibility with old Game Boy uh, cartridges. So this is only a Game Boy Advance model of the Game Boy. It doesn't support the original Game Boy games, Game Boy Color, or anything like that. It has to be a GBA game to play on the Game Boy Micro, uh, which is definitely a drawback. But again, I mean, in terms of portability, 
I mean, this thing nailed it. In fact, it was really ahead of its time. I mean, it's, it's even lighter than the iPhone 4, and not by a little. In fact, it's two ounces lighter, which is actually a lot more than it sounds. It, it, I mean, it feels like nothing. And for a, for a device that's, I mean, again, almost 10 years old, going on a decade uh, of existence, I mean, that's really impressive. So it's a story of ups and downs, and positives and negatives, and sexiness, and, and, and buttons that glow. That's the GBA Micro. Big thanks to our friend Isaiah from Southport, North Carolina for sending this in. It's been years since I actually played one. And now I remember why no one played them.